So the next bundle, which I'm publishing uh, hopefully Monday, I've said that for the last two Mondays, but you know, third time's a charm, uh, is this one. I'm working on it. Uh, and I'm, so unlike the previous, so this is kind of like the sequel to the game that we sell. It's the same kind of model. Uh, I've added like some reward tiers to make it a little bit more like Kickstarter, I suppose. Uh, but the main difference is that the people on this one are actually famous. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so these uh, game artists and musicians, their games have uh, like millions of plays online. And so, yeah, very nice. And also, when they launch us, it also goes through their fan bases as well. Which, you know, spreads the word. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Third time's a charm. And I have been also been experimenting with the message and uh, for both the buyers and the sellers. Uh, in the beginning, I was focused more on game assets that uh, you'd be getting these assets that you would, for them to have any value, you would then have to actually build upon it. But for this one, I'm focusing a little bit more on just, I suppose, something that's consumable by itself. So something like a soundtrack. It's, so previously it would be sprite sheets, which would not have any value until you actually use it in some other project. But for soundtracks, you can just enjoy it on its own. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's for the buyer side, uh, because because uh, I guess unlike open source code, the more people use a code base, the more value it has because it's got the community and documentation, but the more people use an art asset, the more cliche it gets. Which is why I figured that maybe I should switch the more towards consumer. All these experiments with that instead. Uh, as for the sellers, they kind of, uh, I guess, been trying out different kind of messages or a mix of them. Uh, the first is kind of the ideological uh, free web, you know, creative commons, mm -hmm. public domain, awesome stuff. Uh, then also there's the just getting uh, money for things you weren't, you're not gonna make money off of anyway. Like if they have art assets that were just lying around, then why not throw into the bundle? Mm -hmm. Or if they have a soundtrack uh, that it would otherwise just be only in their game, if you could only listen to it through their game, why not uh, put it in the bundle as well? End of answer. <laughs> Why was it important to you to uh, to have it be uh, that the assets become public domain when you reach the goal, as opposed to a under Commons. a Creative Commons license or you know? Mostly ideological reasons. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yes, a lot of people have asked about why not instead of uh, CC BY, which I would, which you know was my uh, second choice. I guess Tenet Camp's still using a Creative Commons license, this is Creative Commons Zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, specifically for attribution, uh, I think, first of all, on the internet attributions are already voluntary. Like, you could tell people to leave the watermark in and they'll actually go out of the way and spend 20 minutes removing it. So, for practical reasons, it's more or less uh, already voluntary. And second of all, I do think for, you should be you know, carrots, not sticks. Or at least incentivize people to attribute rather than punish them for not, like, threaten them legally if you don't attribute. If anyone can just make a copy of your work, then it is going to be hard to recoup the cost. And that's what copyright was originally intended to solve until it was, you know, completely politically distorted to just keep out competitors and just maintain a stranglehold on things which have got, should have gone public domain a long, long time ago. Uh, so, the original problem is, I, I still think, still is valid. But what I'm trying to want to do is create an alternative solution to that. So, instead of restricting the copies, you restrict the, the original, I, I guess. You're kind of holding the original ransom. And once it actually does hit that threshold, then you can copy it however you want because the artists have already been compensated for, for making the work public domain. To be honest, uh, for some game assets, yes. Uh, I actually have like a little, like, I guess a list of from top to, from most, from like how much the problem applies for different kinds of assets. For sound effects, uh, if one game uses a sound effect and another game uses a sound effect, I, no one, no one's gonna care. <laughs> yeah. For soundtracks, uh, people will probably care a little more, but 
not as much as say if you use the exact same character art and exact same like backgrounds and uh, well backgrounds well tile sets uh, can also probably be very useful but character art itself uh, would, would become cliche very fast. That makes sense. Yeah. So I guess like at the at the where the problem least applies would be sound effects, special effects. Then moving up, probably uh, soundtracks, music. Then moving up, uh, tile sets, environment art, and finally character art. It'd be kind of ironic if. I'm just doing bundles like manually, and I do want to open it up as an open platform because if I created a wall garden where I manually select people, that would be kind of uh, counter to the whole open philosophy. Mm -hmm. So yes, next step would be to create a, a, an open platform for anyone to also host their own public domain rants and I suppose. Yes, and also a music bundle. I have a bunch of musicians. Uh, thanks to the uh, guest post on the Good Comments blog, a couple of musicians actually did uh, contact me to be in a in another uh, comedy bundle. That's cool. Yeah. So I think I'll yeah I think I'll do both. Uh, an open platform, but also feature a few. Like so, it's open, and then I also have a curated section as well. <laughs>